How's it? How's it? And thank you for joining me on this continuation of the D24 engine teardown. Today we're going to be ripping apart the cylinder head, starting with the lifters. Now these are solid lifters, so you need to be sure to keep them in the right order. Unlike a hydraulic lifter, they're not self-adjusting. They have a little shim on the top of them that keeps them the exact width, thickness, whatever you want to call it, that they need to be. So they're specific to their cam lobe, specific to their cylinder. Keep them in order. Some of these are a little bit stuck. The engine was sitting for some time. There we go, pick. Now we're thinking. Now once again, I'm taking these valves out. If you remember in the previous video, I noticed there are some cracks between the valves. And I just want to be sure that the cracks don't extend into the actual valve seal themselves. They have a hard seat in them. So as long as the crack doesn't extend into the hard seat, then the compression is probably good and this motor is savable. There we go, there's all the lifters. Now it's time to move on to the valves. You need a valve spring compressor. I recommend one of these simple kinds like the C-clamp. There's all kinds of different ones, but I found that very few seem to fit. And if you remember the diagram that I flashed earlier, we're pressing the spring in so we can grab these fasteners. I don't know if they'd be considered fasteners, retainers. We're going to grab the spring retainers for each one. You're going to want some pliers or some tweezers for this. It's pretty fine work. And slow. This uh, in total took me about 20 minutes. And you're also going to want to keep these in order if possible because later we'll be lapping the valves, and it's important that you get the valve that has been in its seat for, you know, the engine's entire life. There we go, keeping everything nice and organized. Now it's time for one more. Eventually I get into the groove of things. I'm gonna push the spring in. Sometimes it makes a little pop. You might see on the GoPro I jump. Ah, scary. <laughs> I'm probably over compressing the spring, but the more you push it in, the easier it makes the extraction. These are compound springs. You can see there's a smaller inner one and a thicker outer. One upgrade you could do is for the outer spring, replace it with a valve spring from an a ALH. The ALH just has one thick outer spring, so you can get tighter springs and you can rev the motor a little harder. But since the cam is so weak in this thing, I don't want to strain it anymore.
again, keeping everything organized. The cylinder one had water in it, so some of these valves are feeling pretty crispy. There we go. I take a look at that. It's got a lot of buildup. And we're off to the races. Just do the same thing five more times. All right, we got it all assembled. And I wanted to show you just how gnarly some of these valves were. It's like there was enough buildup that there's like the ghost of the valve in there. It's just dirt and grime in the shape of it. Yeah, this one I need to pick even to chip away at. I've never seen anything like that. Now it's time to clean her. And after much cleaning, here we go. There's the hard seat. You can kind of see it. And these are our worst two cylinders. So it does not look like the crack 
intrudes into the seat, which is good news. And just looking over all of them, there's cylinder one. Not as bad. So the last two are good, so they're all good. And here, the seat goes a lot deeper than I thought. I'm pointing at it now. It's probably like a quarter inch deep. I figured it would be like maybe an eighth or less. And now it's time, since it's all good, to strip everything else. We're just going to be taking off the glow plugs. Took off the wires first, if you remember, those are an 8mm. And the glow plugs themselves are 12mm. Remember to use lots of PB Blaster. Because, especially with glow plugs, sometimes you could just shear them off in the head. Not this time, though. Everything's coming off nice and easy. Just breaking it all loose. And there's the last of the glow plugs. Now we just have a couple of sensors. Ooh, good catch. These are 14 millimeter. I believe the one in the front is oil pressure and the one in the back is a temperature sensor. But I might just be totally wrong. And there I went, I took a little peek just to see what it would be. That's good. If we do plan to turbo it, we'll probably use a different oil pressure sensor or oil pressure hole for our sensor and run our turbo feed from that. And hey, this head is savable. So up next, we're probably going to be taking it down to Diesel Dave's. He's got a kerosene bath and scrubbing it, getting all that junk out. Stay tuned.